Got a very fun, very full show today. Uh, NASCAR opted not to find Kyle Busch. We got Coke 600 announcements, All-Star Race announcements, Kansas Race announcements, and then Kevin Harvick might just have the most lit race car we've ever seen. I'm sorry, that, that was not a good intro. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. And yeah, like I said, we do have a lot to talk about, a lot of fun stuff as well, so we're going to have a good time on today's episode, but we'll start with some of the more heavy-hitting news off the bat here. I haven't done an episode since Tuesday, so I have a couple days' worth of news to uh, kind of catch up on. Unfortunately, with uh, this kind of being my last big week of the semester here at college, uh, it's uh, it's been kind of crazy, but uh, next week should be a lot better, so this summer, going to have a lot more content coming y'all's way. But because I've missed the last couple days, we have to follow up on one of the biggest stories at the beginning of this week. Uh, Kyle Busch, if you remember after Sunday's, or Monday's, race at Dover. Kyle Busch had choice words about the package. Uh, he called out the NASCAR's aero package at Dover, said saying it sucks, and basically not much else. These are pretty inflammatory comments coming from one of NASCAR's biggest and brightest stars, so uh, a lot of people thought NASCAR would probably take action on this. You know, in the past when drivers speak out, you know, c criticizing the competition, criticizing something about NASCAR, about the race cars, uh, NASCAR often finds them. Like most sports, that's kind of how it is. NBA, NFL, if you criticize the officials or something or the league, they find you nine times out of ten. So I figured, I think a lot of fans figured that was what was going to happen in this case. Kyle Busch was just going to get a little fine, a little slap on the wrist. But no, lo and behold, NASCAR opted not to find Kyle Busch, nor Bob Levine, the owner of Levine Family Racing, who also uh, echoed many of Kyle Busch's same cr uh, criticisms on Twitter. Neither of them are gonna be fined from NASCAR, so uh, very interesting. What this says to me is that, you know, NASCAR's kind of new leadership with Jim France and some of these other guys like Steve O'Donnell, Steve Phelps, kind of having a bigger role in things. It sounds like they're really trying to go a different direction than they've been going during Brian France's past regime. Brian France wouldn't have stood for this type of stuff. Any sort of uh, public criticism, he would have come at them uh, hard and swiftly. Uh, with this new administration, this new group of leadership, you know, it seems like it's quite different. I've already given you guys my opinion. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with what Kyle Busch said, but I definitely disagree with how he said it. So I am surprised they didn't find him, but uh, I guess, you know, hey, maybe this shows that NASCAR is open to criticism. And I think that's a good thing, uh, as long as we keep the criticism fair and just. You know, there's unfair criticisms, unfair criticisms, and I think this Kyle Busch one kind of skirted that edge a little bit. Anyway, we'll move on from that. Another bit of news that I wanted to talk about kind of has to do with this. This has been an ongoing conversation this week. Several drivers have given their opinions, uh, not just on the aero package and the current uh, direction of NASCAR, but also how the leadership, how, you know, the people in charge of the sanctioning body and everything, how they've been kind of communicating with drivers over the past several months or several years. And we had a few different drivers give kind of differing thoughts on this. Kevin Harvick said earlier this week that he believes uh, really since 2001, since, and he used this example, since Dale Sr. passed away, NASCAR has really not done a very good job of listening to the drivers. He feels like a lot of drivers' feedback and criticism has fallen on deaf ears. That was what Kevin Harvick said. He added a little bit more. Here's one quote he said earlier this week. A lot of Kyle Busch's frustration and what he's saying bleeds over to other drivers. You don't feel like your voice is being heard. The driver's voice is not being heard very much on things when it comes to competition, especially when it comes to this particular style of rules package. And then you get to Dover and it boils over after the first 11 weeks. So that's Kevin Harvick, I guess, offering an explanation as to why he thinks Kyle Busch obviously had strong words about the package. Kevin Harvick criticized the package as well after Dover. He was a little bit more restrained in how he phrased things, though. But now another top Cup Series driver, in fact, the defending champion, Joey Logano, uh, also had some things to say on this topic, and his opinions varied pretty greatly from Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick says he doesn't feel like drivers' voices are being heard by NASCAR. Joey Logano, and I'll read you his quote, says kind of the exact opposite. Logano says, NASCAR has done a good job, better than ever, for at least the meetings I sit in, which is quite a few of them lately, to try and hear everybody out. And then it's kind of up to NASCAR from there to take everyone's opinion and try to make the best decision for everybody. And that's not going to make everybody happy, right? You can't. How many times do we say in our society, can't make everyone happy? You just can't, right? We can't make every fan happy. We can't make every driver happy. You just can't. So you have to weigh in what you think is best and try to steer the ship to what you feel is best for the sport. And NASCAR has to take that and make a very challenging decision with that sometimes. That's from Joey Logano. Very interesting to hear Kevin Harvick say he doesn't think the drivers are being listened to at all versus Joey Logano saying, hey, NASCAR is actually listening to us now better than ever. So kind of interesting to weigh those two against each other. But Joey Logano brings up an interesting point that I think not enough fans are aware of. So I'm going to talk about that briefly. Ultimately, when it comes to deciding what kind of race car we're going to see, particularly with like the Gen 6 or now the Gen 7, and also when it comes down to what kind of aero package, what kind of rules changes we're going to see uh, when it comes to the race cars themselves, NASCAR 
has a lot of different people that they have to answer to usually. They don't just go to the drivers and say, hey drivers, what do you guys want? And then they can't just go to the fans and say, what do you guys want? They also have to go to the manufacturers, the sponsors, especially the manufacturers though, Ford, Chevy, and Toyota. They have to go to them a lot of times and figure out what they want because it's ultimately their logos and their style on these race cars that we see every week. And oftentimes when NASCAR goes to all these different areas and asks their opinions, they get variations. Some people, the drivers might want one thing that the manufacturers don't, and maybe the fans want something the drivers do, but the manufacturers don't want that either. There's a lot of conflicting opinions there, I believe. We've heard this year that part of the reason why NASCAR opted to lower the horsepower at some tracks so much this year uh, is because some manufacturers, not just Ford, Chevy, and Toyota, but even outside manufacturers that might be interested in joining NASCAR, have said that building 900 horsepower engines like we've had in the past just isn't cost effective, just really isn't a, a ben isn't beneficial to them at all. So NASCAR is having to compromise. The drivers want a lot of horsepower. I think most fans want a lot of horsepower, but the people who are ultimately supplying the, the parts, the people who are ultimately giving NASCAR the most money, don't want 900 horsepower engines. So there's a compromise right there. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota wanted the Gen 6 cars to look more like the street cars, which is why you have kind of curvier bodies now. Curvier bodies, I'm, de I'm describing cars, I swear. But like you look at the Gen 4, the Gen 5, like the door panels and over the wheel wells, very flat, very streamlined. You look at the Gen 6, kind of, you know, bent out, flared out, all that type of stuff that's added to si the side force issue that NASCAR has these days. But hey, the manufacturers wanted it. So what's NASCAR gonna say? They have to compromise on some of these things. And I think that's something that not enough fans are aware of. NASCAR can't just listen to what the fans say and immediately only bend to the will of the fans. They also have to, you know, listen to what the manufacturers want, what the drivers want, what other sponsors want. They can't just go to one group of people and have them dictate the entire sport. That's unfortunately not the way it works. It's like Joey Logano said, you can't please everybody. I mean, even some of the drivers don't agree with each other. I've heard Austin Dillon actually credit this package recently. So I, not even all the drivers are on the exact same page. It's very hard for NASCAR to make the right decisions here going forward because as Joey Logano says, you can't please everybody. And I don't think NASCAR ever will. So I just think fans, it's worth keeping that in mind when you demand things like on the fly like this. Okay, we got that mostly out of the way. Let's go on to some of the fun stuff. Uh, we got some uh, updates as far as all-star fan voting is concerned. Now, I remember I did an episode a couple weeks back where we talked about the 15 drivers that are already locked into the all-star race. Of course, before the all-star race happens, we have the all-star open race where a couple other drivers can, uh, can win their way into the all-star race field. But the other way you can possibly lock yourself into the main race is by winning the fan vote. So uh, yeah, let's take a look. NASCAR released publicly uh, an updated look at the top vote getters so far. Now remember you can still go to I guess NASCAR.com and vote for your favorite driver to see if they can uh, make it into the show on uh, with with fan support. But what's interesting, in years past, NASCAR has done this and just shown like the top 10 drivers, but in no particular order. This year, however, they actually show the top 10 vote getters so far in order. So we know who's actually leading the fan vote right now for the first time ever, which I think is very interesting. So here's the top 10 uh, drivers that are not currently locked into the all-star race. Remember the top vote getter gets in. So here's what they, here's what it looks like right now. Couple surprises on here. Ross Chastain sneaks in at number 10. Paul Menard, I'm a little surprised he's up here. Notice you see Ryan Priest, one rookie of the year contender, but you don't see see Daniel Hemrick or uh, Matt Tift, other Rookie of the Year contenders. Uh, that's kind of interesting to me. And Matt DiBenedetto leading the fan vote definitely has kind of a cult following that he's uh, grown throughout the last couple of years. Kyle Larson second, then of course a couple of Hendrick guys, uh, Bowman and Byron right there, not too far behind, and then Bubba Wallace, Daniel Suarez. Not too shocking of a top 10 here, but I'll be honest, I am a little surprised to see Matt DiBenedetto leading the charge so far. I'm, I'm a little surprised. He had a great showing in the Daytona 500, uh, but beyond that, he's kind of honestly not been any better this year than last year. So I actually would say DiBenedetto has been a little disappointing this season. But hey, he's got his fans. He's a likable guy, so I don't have a problem with him possibly winning this fan vote. But I am a little surprised. As a Kyle Larson fan myself, I'm a little surprised that Larson Nation hasn't shown up quite as much. He's their second. I guess he is second on that list, so it's not like Larson fans haven't shown up. But I'm a little surprised. I'll make my little push here for those Kyle Larson fans. Get him in the All-Star race. He'll probably win one of the stages and get in anyways, but just in case... I'll get him in that All-Stars. I know he's had a down year, but come on, it's Kyle Larson. He's fun. In all fairness, though, I haven't actually voted either, so I guess I can't criticize anybody for this. Uh, yeah, go vote. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that might be interesting. It's cool that NASCAR is actually revealing the top 10 in order. In years past, like I said, they just show kind of like the top 10 in no particular order and you didn't really know who was leading, who was not. This is interesting to see now kind of who some of the more popular names in NASCAR, who they are. 
uh, Matt Benedetto made a name for himself. A lot of people can't pronounce his name, but they sure know who to vote for, I guess. Now, there was another announcement made earlier this week regarding uh, action at Charlotte Motor Speedway. This is not for the All-Star Race, but instead for the Coca-Cola 600 on Memorial Day weekend. As you can see in this tweet right here, uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway announces that after the end of stage two of the Coca-Cola 600, they will bring the cars down pit road and stop the race briefly for all to remember the significance of Memorial Day weekend. Now on the surface, this doesn't seem too surprising. It's, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend, it's NASCAR, very patriotic sport, they always have been, never been really shy about it. Uh, this doesn't seem too surprising, but of course, a lot of people were talking about it on Twitter, on other social media, you know, what this really means. Some people are calling this move unnecessary, which, yeah, sure, I guess it's not absolutely necessary. You know, NASCAR does plenty of stuff on Memorial Day weekend to honor the veterans and everything. This is probably extra. They don't need to do this, but I still think it's a fairly nice gesture. And it's something kind of unique and different. Other people said, why they got to pause the race in stage two to do this? Why not do it in the pre-race like they do a lot of the other stuff? And that I can understand. That's a little weird. But I think NASCAR could just be trying to mix things up a little bit. So like almost every NASCAR announcement these days, it was met with some level of criticism. Uh, but I... Don't, don't really agree with any of it. Personally, I don't mind adding a few extra minutes during the stage two break to do this whole thing. I think it might be kind of a cool spectacle, honestly. You race for you know a couple hundred miles at the beginning of this thing, loud cars going around the track, and then you pause everything for a moment of silence, you know, a big remembrance moment, and then you resume with the rest of this race of crazy stuff happening. I think that could be kind of cool if you're there in person, honestly. Some people, of course, are gonna be cynical about NASCAR trying something new, but I'm not really seeing the issue with it. I don't, again, I don't think it's absolutely necessary by any means, but I don't understand the harm in doing it at all. I think it can only do good things. It's it's a good gesture in my opinion. Now to end the show, we have to talk about the Kevin Harvick Bush Beer Millennial Car. If you haven't seen it, here's some of the release video. Three, two, one. Oh no. It's a lot pinker than I thought it was going to be. Well, we spelled skirt, skirt on the skirt without an eye. Why do we leave letters out of everything? I, I don't understand. Yeah, legal approve that. I don't understand what the frog in the, is that T? Thanks for designing an absolutely horrible looking race car. Yeah, I actually kind of feel for Kevin Harvick here. <laughs> now, for those of you who aren't familiar with kind of the origin of this whole deal, uh, last season during the championship race weekend, before that race, which Kevin Harvick was a Final Four contender in, Bush Beer kind of publicly laid down a gauntlet. They publicly said that if Kevin Harvick didn't win the championship, they would run a millennial car. And they showed this back in November. This was their original kind of pre-rendering, their early look at what they were thinking. And honestly, I think that one was a lot worse. The pink car here that they ultimately went with doesn't look too bad to me. I mean, obviously a lot of the sayings on it are kind of, I don't know, I don't really think it's even a millennial car. A lot of those feel like even younger than my generation. Like I'm kind of on that edge. I'm more of like a Gen Z, I guess, technically. I feel like a lot of the things on that car are more catering to my age demographic and maybe even younger but uh, that's just me, I don't know. Either way, obviously Kevin Harvick didn't win the championship last year, so credit to Bush Beer, they didn't back down. They ultimately came right back out here and uh, and decided to, uh, to live up to their promise, I guess. So I'll give them that credit. Uh, this car is definitely something. It's, it's an eyesore, I would say. Some people were talking about the fact that it says Bush AF on the front. For those of you who don't know, AF stands for as fudge only I didn't say fudge. Which I'm a little surprised got past the NASCAR sensors. I feel like they're kind of stingy about little things like that, but hey, all right. A few other funny things on the car. I will say I do really like the Bush beer can on the side with the Snapchat dog filter. That is funny. I will say that credit to that one. That, that's a good one, Bush beer. Ultimately what makes this funny to me is it's Kevin Harvick, a guy who typically doesn't love the young millennial crowd. He's gotten into it with the, with the Dylan brothers. I mean, last year he got into it with Ross Chastain. He's not a big fan of the young crowd, you know? But here he is rocking the millennial pink bush beer car. And there were some funny moments from that clip. I, I saw a few funny photoshops I wanna share with you guys. I love this screen grab right here. Just Kevin Harvick's face looking at the phrase of the day, can't even. He, he doesn't know what he's doing here. Kevin Harvick is completely lost and Honestly, it's kind of funny, I'll give him that. Of course, some people decided to Photoshop this thing and had a little bit of fun with it, I will say. This is, that's a good one right there. <laughs> or this Kevin Harvick exception, this is fun. I, NASCAR fans on the internet, you guys have your dark days, but you also have your really, uh, your really bright moments, and this is one of them. <laughs> Ultimately, I think this is harmless, uh, pretty much just in, fun, in good fun. Uh, it's an ugly car, for sure. It's a very hideous car. He's running this thing in the All-Star Race, by the way, so. You're only gonna see it for you know a couple hundred miles at least. But I don't have a big problem with it. Don't know if it's gonna boost uh, Bush Beer sales at all, but hey, 
We'll see. It's it's interesting, at least. It's noteworthy. Anyway, you guys, that's my show. That's all I wanted to talk about today. Had a lot of little things to cover. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are down in the description. You can also check out down there and get yourself an Out of the Groove t-shirt. If you want to support me, support the show. I really appreciate that. Uh, also, a big thank you, of course, to my Patreon supporters. Michael Harrison, at Jewels of the Stars, SelfishGifts.com, Mentally Defective, Cameron James, John Koblenz, Jason R. Long, Wesley Donaldson, Isaac Dennison, Mika Suzuki, iFancyRace.com, Ross Corlett, uh, the racinginsiders.com and the rest of these amazing patreon supporters really appreciate the support you guys got some big things in the works uh, for the coming months on this show and uh, really appreciate the support from you guys couldn't do it without you thanks for watching everyone i'll be back probably tomorrow night maybe sunday with uh, my kansas race reaction not sure exactly how that's gonna come out how that's gonna play out exactly i might make a video tomorrow night we'll see but uh, i'll see you guys then see you later this weekend and of course i'll have more episodes up next week semester for me at school is more or less over now so youtube's now gonna be taking up quite a bit of my time over the next several months. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting to work. Thanks for watching everyone. See you very, very soon.